What is genocide? According to Raphael Lemkin, the jurist who coined the term in uh, 1944, mid-1940s, uh, this comes from two other root words. There's the Greek word genos, meaning you know a race or a kind, and then there's side, and this, of course, essentially means killing. So you put these both together and you get genocide, the killing of a tribe, a people, or a race. This is a word with which we are all relatively familiar today in one definition or another. However, the concept uh, is has been around for centuries. There's a, a word called populicide, which comes from the French during the French Revolution. And Lemkin, whose life's work ultimately was to uh, clarify and create the understanding of this and have a legal framework for it as a crime, uh, he wanted to emphasize this was not necessarily a uh, crime against like a nation, right? So, so it's not genocide, technically speaking, for Iraq to wage war on Iran or something like that. Those are nations fighting, not a group of people. Another important part of what makes a genocide a genocide is that there is an intent, a planned act to, uh, through one means or another, annihilate this group of people, whomever they might be. And Lemkin later in 1946 clarified that by this definition, he didn't just mean religious groups, for instance. He meant also just groups around racial lines or uh, national groups, you know, with an, with an ethnic or uh, nationalist identity within a larger community. The UN eventually defined this as well uh, with a much more long-winded definition, which maybe we can have pop up on the screen for a second. Perfect. You can pause the video if you want to read the whole thing, but we're not going to quote it to you right now. Why are we talking about the, the small legal differences between what makes mass murder at a state level a genocide or not a genocide? That's because, as most modern historians believe, a hundred years ago this week, on April 24th specifically, a thing known as the Armenian Massacre, or the Great Crime, or the Armenian Genocide began in modern day Turkey under the rule of the Ottoman Empire. And even today, people across the world are arguing about whether or not this was a genocide. So what happened? Why are we having this debate today? Beginning in 1915, again, around April 24th, hundreds of thousands of people died. That is an inarguable fact. Hundreds of thousands of, uh, specifically, Armenian Christians died. Estimates range as high as 1.5 million. But why? Well, we do know that at this time, the Ottoman Empire was in decline, and one of its geopolitical rivals, Russia, was uh, suspected of working with the Armenian Christian population or having them uh, function as you know, supporters, clandestine groups of some sort. We shall also point out this is not an unreasonable belief. Uh, if you check out our earlier video on proxies and proxy wars, then you can clearly see that it is a dirty practice that a lot of countries use to exploit uh, a minority group or a somehow isolated group uh, to destabilize the government or governance of a country. So this is not an impossible thing. So let's talk about some primary sources, contemporary proof. We do know that the New York Times and a couple other publications began reporting more than once on massacres of Armenian citizens in the Ottoman Empire. So let's fast forward to the modern day. Multiple countries uh, have officially recognized this as a genocide. Modern day Turkey does not. And one of the arguments is that this goes down to uh, a question of intent. Was there a systematic plan by the Ottoman Empire to annihilate the Armenian population? They say no. And furthermore, they argue there are a number of reasons this should not be considered a genocide. First, they say the number of deaths is wildly conflated uh, on the order of maybe just 300 to 400,000 versus 
1.5 million. Uh, second, they say that both sides were fighting and suffered casualties. Third, they say that the Muslim population, especially in eastern Anatolia, uh, suffered more deaths than the Armenian numbers that are, in their opinion, alleged. And also, Turkish officials have said that other countries pressing this point of calling these events, these uh, massacres, this mass murder, a genocide, is an attempt to attack Turkey's identity and to attack Turkey's history. This is a tremendously sensitive subject. So what's in a name? That's one of the big questions. Let's remember that the Armenian murders, whether you consider them a genocide or not, occurred before the atrocities of World War II. It also occurred before uh, Raphael Lemkin arrived at this legal definition of genocide. And you'll see arguments saying that um, there are two different definitions of genocide. The one that you and I and Matt would all talk about as in a mass murder of a specific group of people with the goal of those people no longer existing, uh, or a legal definition which is a little more nuanced. And here's the strange thing. Both sides seem to believe there is some sort of conspiracy afoot. For those who deny the concept of these murders as a genocide, uh, there's this idea that it is a circuitous way to attack Turkey's nationalist identity, to maybe reduce some of its power in the region and in the overall international sphere. To those who support calling uh, these murders a genocide, then the conspiracy is on the side of the Ottoman and then later the Turkish government. And the idea being that these entities have worked assiduously to cover up the actual events. So with all that in mind, what do you think? What occurred 100 years ago this week? What should it be called and why? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for checking out this video. Like, subscribe, share, all of that stuff. If you would like to learn more about this, please tune into our audio podcast that we also have coming out this week. Uh, if you'd like to find Matt and I, uh, well, we're, the, we're lousy all over the internet. You can find us on StuffThey'dontWantYouToKnow.com, which is our website. We're on Facebook and we're on Twitter. Uh, we post a lot of stuff that doesn't always make it to the air for one reason or another. And we'd like to hear from you. Our best suggestions, our best topics to ever cover always come from you. Specifically, you. You.